Jesus in the darkness over every enemy And Jesus for my family, I speak the holy name Jesus Shout Jesus in the mountains, Jesus in the streets Jesus in the darkness over every enemy And Jesus for my family I speak the holy name
speak the name of Jesus over you In your hurt and in your sorrow I will ask my God to move I speak the name cause it's all that I can do In desperation I seek heaven And pray this for you I pray for your healing Circumstances will change I pray that the fear inside will flee In Jesus' name I pray that a breakthrough Would happen today I pray miracles over your life In Jesus' name In Jesus' name Eternal God is our refuge, and underneath our everlasting arms. Would you stand with me? As we made the procession up the aisles, at the top of the aisles, we just raise the song, How Great Is Our God. I want you to really sing as if you are at church, worshiping the Lord at that point. Now is Christ risen from the dead, and become the first fruits of them that slept. For since by man came death, 
By man came also the resurrection of the dead. For as in Adam all die, even so in Christ shall all be made alive. Now this I say, brethren, that flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God. Neither doth corruption inherit incorruption. Behold, I show you a mystery. We shall not all sleep, but we shall all be changed. In a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, at the last trump, for the trumpet shall sound, and the dead shall be raised incorruptible, and we shall be changed. For this corruptible must put on incorruption, and this mortal must put on immortality. So when this corruptible shall have put on incorruption, and this mortal shall have put on immortality, then shall be brought to pass the saying that is written, Death is swallowed up in victory. O death, where is thy sting? O grave, where is thy victory? The sting of death is sin, and the strength of sin is the law. But thanks be to God, who giveth us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Therefore, my beloved brethren, be steadfast, unmovable, always abundant in the work of the Lord, for as much as you know that your labor shall not be in vain in the Lord. O death, where is thy sting? O grave, where is thy victory? The sting of death is sin, and the strength of sin is the law. But thanks be to God, who giveth us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Let's sing that song. How great is our God. Let's sing it with spirit. We are worshiping the Lord. Let's sing. Not on the fruit of but unto the Lord. Thank you. Oh, 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 oh. Name 
How great thou art, then sings my soul, then sings my soul, my Savior God to thee. How great thou art, how great thou art, how Amen. It is the greatness of God that we celebrate in the midst of all the, what is called the vicissitudes of life, all the happenings that happens in life, including death. As one of the songs of the Asian morning, we talk about the changing scenes of life. This is one of those changing scenes, and a reality we can never escape and must prepare it for. So this evening, I say good afternoon to everyone. Good afternoon, firstly. Good afternoon. A blessed good afternoon for that matter, despite the fact that it's a time of some sadness for Stephanie and other family members. We're here to offer joy. We're here to offer peace. We're here to offer encouragement and strength to you as you face your loss. But knowing that our dear brother Fitz, Everton Randolph, may I say to you, and I'll say it again, coming down to the end, committed his life at the end to the Lord Jesus Christ. And that's why we can all sing to our soul the hope that is for all Christians who believe in Christ. Is his. And so we're here to celebrate his life as well as mourn his loss. Dearly beloved, we're gathered today to pay our final tribute of respect to that which was mortal of our deceased loved one and friend. To you, all members of the family who mourn your loss, we especially offer our deep and indeed our sincere sympathy. And may we share with you the comfort afforded by God's word for such a time, hour, and an occasion as this. In the words of Jesus Christ as found in the New International Version which reads, Do not let your hearts be troubled. Trust in God. Trust also in me. In my father's house are many rooms, or the King James will say mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I'm going there to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come back and take it to be with me that you also may be where I am. John's Gospel, chapter 14. Verses 1, 2, and 3. Also in John, and I now quote from the King James Version, I read these words. I'm the resurrection and the life, saith the Lord. He that believeth in me, though he were dead, yet shall he live. Or whosoever liveth and believeth in me shall never die. I know that my Redeemer liveth, and that he shall stand at the latter day upon the earth. And though after my skin, where I'm destroyed this body, yet in my flesh shall I see God, whom I shall see for myself, and my eyes shall behold and not another. We brought nothing into this world. And it is certain we can carry nothing out. The Lord gave and the Lord hath taken away. Blessed still be the name of the Lord. And the psalmist finally says, Lord, make me to know my end and the number of my days, that I may be certified how long I have to live. Behold, thou hast made my days as it were a span long. And my age is even as nothing in respect of thee. And verily, Every man living is altogether vanity. This being the word of the Lord, let the people just say amen. Amen. So be it for the word of God. We're going to continue by singing um, that hymn um, through all the changing scenes of life. I did mention it. I forgot it's in the program for a while there. And um, this was requested especially by family members. I presume this would have been one of its songs as well. So let's sing it. Let's be in the Anglican Church. There's no pipe organ, but let's pretend we have it. Let's do the best we can with it. Amen.
my heart, my tongue, employ. Oh, magnify the Lord with me, with me, exalt His name when in distress to Him I go. of God, the host of God, and camp around the dwellings of the just, deliverance of all to all, he his On the following page is Psalm 46, written in the King James January. I was asked by the reader of the scripture what version should he use. I say either one, as he mentioned one or the other. But for me, when it comes to the Psalms, I think the King James is the best version to read it from. It has that poetic way of expressing itself, and the Psalms is poet, poetry, I should say, um, music in itself. So you, you can't read it flat. It has to have that kind of ring. I'm going to read the first verse. You're going to respond to the second verse. We read like that. When we get in the middle of it, it says, The Lord of hosts, I want you to lift your voice. The Lord of hosts is with us. And we do it coming down to the end as well. I commence at this time. God is our refuge and strength. A very present help in trouble. Though the waters thereof roar and be troubled, though the mountains shake with the swelling thereof, God is in the midst of her. She shall not be moved. God shall help her, and that right early. Together, everyone, the Lord of hosts is with us. The God of Jacob is our refuge. Continue. <clears throat> he maketh wars to cease unto the end of the earth. He breaketh the bow and cutteth the spear in sunder. He burneth the child of fire. Let's read together now. Be still and know that I am God. I will be exalted among the heathen. I be exalted in the earth. The Lord of hosts is with us. The God of Jacob is our refuge. Let the people again say, Amen. This is indeed the word of God. Amen. 
Family members, I want to invite you, all family members, around this casket, please. Stephanie, all family members, please come. Let's go back to the hymn we just sang. And um, let's sing the fourth verse that says, Oh, may but trial of his love, experience will decide. How blessed are they, and only they, who in his truth confide. And then, the father, son, skip the, four, the other verse and skip. In fact, you can see the other verse, Fame you saints, you will then. And I know it's a time of emotion and tears, but that's all part of what we're doing here this evening, being there for each other. Oh, mate, but trial of his love. We prepare for prayer. Remain standing and keep standing for prayer, please. If you don't mind. Thank you. Father in heaven this afternoon, we recognize you the God who shall reign and whose glory is forever. We recognize you are the creator and the giver of life. We recognize we are the creatures who depend upon you. In our time of tears, in our time of sadness, in our down times, in our times when we have more questions than answers, in our time when we don't know sometimes what to say, where to turn, it's good to know we can turn to a God who you have termed yourself as the God of all comfort. You're the God of joy also, the joy that can become our strength. You're the God of peace, that peace that is beyond human understanding. You're the God of love, a love that can be shed abroad in our hearts by the Holy Spirit when we come to faith in Jesus Christ. And so God, what will be our experiences? What will be our pains? What will be the emotions of the time? It's good to know we can cast all our cares on you because you care for us. And so I left Stephanie before you. I left sons and daughters, I left all family members. God, you know all that they're going through at this time. But happen to know you really understand what they're going through. Because you also stood in heaven and watched your son strong on the cross, crying out, My God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? And it's good to know, God, that you understand the experience because you've gone through it through Jesus. You know what it is to, to die. You know what it is to be alone. You know what it is to be betrayed. You know what it is to be the innocent one who suffers as if you were the guilty one. And so, Father, whatever the emotions are all going on here at this time, help us to know you care, you understand. And so, Lord, your love now surrounds this family in their time of pain, sadness, sorrow, and tears. I pray, God, your hand of strength and joy and peace be theirs, O oh God. I pray, God, Father, that this service will be one that can help unite them as a family to learn to appreciate each other. Today it's fit. Who knows who could be next, oh God. And so, Lord, may they be there for one another, to love one another, to back one another, to encourage one another, to help one another, just to be there for one another. And I pray, Father, for this service as well, beyond this family, each one of us remind us again in another service of our own mortality. Remind us again that your word says it is appointed unto every man who wants to die. Remind us again, oh God, that Wisdom and common sense is now is the accepted time. Now is the time of salvation. Now is the time to get right. Now is the time to repent. Now is the time for faith in Jesus Christ. And so, Father, I pray you use this service to bring glory to your name and speak to our hearts and that we come in line. And out of this service, faith will be exercised in Jesus, who is the resurrection and the life. Tears our language, says a song, that you understand. And so we can cry on to you. We can cry our tears. The psalmist did that many times. And we do so again this afternoon. To you be all honor, Father. To you be all glory. To you be all praise, dominion, and glory, and worship is unto you. So God, we bless you in the midst of our pain. We say thank you yet, and, and to you be all glory. In Jesus' name, and let the people join me to say, Amen. Family, God be with you.
and go to their places. That's all. You can all sit. Let me invite Ken Stroke out this time to come and share the eulogy with us. Let's listen attentively as he does so. Good afternoon. Fitz Everton Randolph Blackman was born on June 24, 1945, to Sybil Lawrence, later Straker, and Everton Blackman. He had seven brothers and three sisters. Fitz was my father's eldest brother, and I knew him only as Uncle Ronnie. To understand our relationship, you have to understand that my parental grandfather passed away when my father was only 14 years old. And so Uncle Ronnie, being the eldest child of my grandmother, took a kind of a father figure role to my dad. Of course, when we came along, that later extended to us. It would always bring a smile to my face when I heard a bicycle bell outside my house. I knew for sure it was Uncle Rani. The greetings were always the same. A huge smile while still wearing his favorite helmet and riding shades. He would extend his arms for a warm hug with his signature laugh and say, how you doing? I recall being in awe of Uncle Rani, riding everywhere he needed to go up until he was about 75 years old, never seeming to really break a sweat. He only stopped when the doctors demanded that he do it for his own health. Over the years, Uncle Ronnie and I have had many long conversations about his life and career, but being that he was almost 50 years old when I was born, I felt that I needed to speak with some other people to understand who he was as a young man. I spoke with old friends, co-workers, and family. And a few things were consistent across all of their stories. Firstly, Rani treated everybody like family. To his friends, he was considered a brother. To his co-worker, he was like a father. And to me and my siblings, he was the grandfather that we never had. Another common thread is that everyone spoke of how warm and generous Rani was. He had a special talent for making everybody feel like they were the only person in the world. His generosity was evident even as a teenager when he volunteered with the Red Cross for their wheels, Meals on Wheels program to give foods to shut-ins. It was there that he made good friends with a young man by the name of Martin Taylor. He was such a friendly person that Martin's mother, Audrey Mears, later known as Ma Audrey, unofficially adopted him as their son giving him two more siblings, Martin and Herbert. So now we are 12. I am told that one of, on one of his frequent trips to St. Vincent to visit this adopted family, he decided to go fishing on a reef. When they arrived, they found that there weren't very much fish. And so in true Rani fashion, he befriended a nearby fisherman and convinced him to take them to the best fishing spot nearby. He really embodied 
the sentiments of Proverbs 18.24. A man that has friends must show himself friendly. Rani always gave 100%, and he excelled in the things that he did. Actually, while he was still a teenager working for the Red Cross, the wife of Barbados's last pre-independence governor general, John Stowe, was asked to be educated on the inner workings of the Meals on Wheels program. Rani was quickly recommended as the best person for this illustrious job of tour guide. After a thorough tour of the operations and explaining how everything worked to Lady Stowe, she was so impressed that she immediately offered him a job at the Governor General's house. However, a friend of the Governor General, who was nearby, immediately stole him away into one of his first jobs at the Juicy Factory. He started working at a very young age. Firstly, with his father as an apprentice. His father was a painter and foreman at Barnes & Company. Rani claims that he was severely underpaid for this work. Of course, he was a young teenager. But he, he claimed that he only got about $8 a week. And perhaps his father was taking the extra money as a training fee. Rani insists that this training fee was mostly invested by his father in the local spirits and liquor industry, perhaps to cope with the stress of teaching such a young man. He went on to have many jobs, including at Swiss Chalet as a painter, Marine Hotel, Pebbles Beach Bar, and he spent quite a long time at the Bagatelle Restaurant and many others. At all of these places, he put his natural gift for hospitality to work. And as a result, he again, he excelled. He would tell me of all of the celebrities and sometimes even minor royalty who passed through his restaurant. Later in his career, he would go back to his roots as a painter and the same thing applied. Rani was patient and meticulous in his work and was highly respected for being an industrious and diligent worker. His work was so exemplary that his colleague and friend, Andrew Phillips, took him with him wherever he went. Whenever he changed company, he had to ensure that Rani came with him. My uncle was a huge fan of World Cup football. He was an avid follower of Brazil in particular, and Pelé was his favorite player of all. Of course, he might have been influenced by the three World Cups that Pelé won from 1958 to 1970 while Rani was still a young man. He also enjoyed decorating for Christmas. Everybody in the community knew this. Going to see Uncle Rani's elaborately decorated home and garden was an annual tradition for my family. As children, we were always excited to see what new decorations he had and how he would set them up this year. Rani was a very sharp dresser. He had a wide array of hats and sneakers in a kaleidoscope of colors so that he was always matching. I see Stephanie shaking her head. She knows. I told him, I, I'm told, sorry, that on special occasions, he even liked to don a cowboy hat and boots, a passion he shared with his late brother, Basil. Then, Rani cared very deeply for his family. He loved his kids, Enid and Randolph. Rudolph, sorry and his wife, Stephanie, who he shared several decades with. He treated his, her five children as his own. His siblings loved and revered him and always looked out for him as he looked out for them. To his family, Fitz was an extremely generous man. 
it was basically impossible to visit Uncle Ronnie and leave without a drink. So many times I protested and said, look, I just passing through for five minutes. It's okay. But he would demand that I take it and drink it at home anyway. He would often send us anything he had, bread, fruit, produce. Sometimes even sending a couple drinks down our way at Christmas time. He enjoyed giving. He took great pleasure in making sure that others were well taken care of. Uncle Ronnie always told me and my brother that he never expected to live past the age of 65 years old. So in his mind, every day, every second past 65 was over time. Maybe that explains why I remember him always being so upbeat. Maybe we could all benefit from treating every day like a blessing and taking nothing for granted. Maybe we should seek to emulate his generosity, kindness, and friendliness. Maybe the world would be a better place if everyone was a bit more like my Uncle Ronnie. I really do wish that I could have had a bit longer with Uncle Ronnie. But I think he was just happy to make it past 65. Nevertheless, now over time has come to an end. God has blown the whistle and Fitz has gone to sleep. To his wife, Stephanie. To all of his children, brothers, sisters, both biological and adopted. Nephews, nieces, cousins. All his extended family and friends. I would like to leave you with the words of one of my favorite hymns that remind me of the way that Uncle Rani treated life. When peace, like a river, attendeth my way, when sorrows like sea billows roll, whatever my lot, thou hast taught me to say, it is well, it is well with my soul. You might give us a amount of applause. I don't normally encourage that, but I thought that um, you, you do so well put together and put forth. And uh, I listen very well. Um, I learned a lot. I think I picked up a lot before I learned a lot. I would have felt some things, but then I listened to him, I realized what I felt is what I was right. And I really want to appreciate that from a young man seeing his uncle and being able to capture the man as he was and explain that man to you. The man with the big smile, who hugged, who was warm, who laughed, who um, treated everybody like family, friendly, warm again I say, generous and that's well known, a sharp dresser. I didn't get a chance to see the sharp dressing. I saw him when he was lying down. But you can see from the, look at the pictures and you can see for yourself, the sharp dresser and meticulous. Anybody who can spend the time Put no lights as he did every year. It has to be meticulous. I don't have the patience to be like that. I put them up, make sure they look alright, and I done. But uh, he's going to be meticulous, and um, that, that's the way. So I really thank you again for that uh, well put together um, eulogy. We're a small crowd in the sense of how some funerals go, but wants to be still big and all given. Let me explain myself. Um, we take an offering in all of our funeral services, but offerings are normally used as a way of helping the family. So what we give here today, normally it goes 50-50, and that, that depends on the size of it. it normally, it just go one way. But we want to make sure out of our, our respect, our love, our gratitude, our thankfulness for the late Frank Fritz, Everton Randolph Blackman. We want to give a good offering. This helps the family. 
Funerals are never cheap, no matter how, how, how they look. They're never cheap. And um, we want to make sure that we honor our friend, our late friend now, and those who are left behind at this time. So let's stand and sing. And before you stand, just, just a minute. Anybody has a Methodist by any chance? Anybody has a Methodist? No? Just your one? But you got to sing real hard because this song is the Methodist um, standard song, anthem. Am I right? And can it be right? Charles Wesley wrote this, who was the founder with John Wesley of Methodism. And you really got to sing, so and can it be? So let's stand and pray. Don't give yet, please. Let's stand and pray. One thing at a time, please. Let's stand, everybody, please. Unless you have a bad back and a bad foot, let's stand. Before you worship better when you're standing than when you're sitting, believe you me. Father, I want to ask your blessings on this offering that we give. We give it out of love. We give it because we care. And I ask your blessings on those of us who will give because our hearts are in the right place in this giving. It is an act of worship. We're not just throwing something in the, in the basket. We're giving as unto the Lord. So I pray your blessings on all of us now. And may you get glory, honor, and praise out of this app. In Jesus' name. And the people again say, Amen. And can it be?
Amen and amen. I'm going to invite the scripture reader. I try to remember if she said pastor or brother. Um, Rudolph Joseph, son of the late Fitz Blackman. I only found out that the day I met Fitz himself. And I knew Brother Joseph all these years. He read in 1 Thessalonians 4, 13 to 18. Remain seated while he reads, please. I think you'll hide my dad on the Good evening. Good afternoon. Reading is taken from 1 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 13 to 18. I'm reading from the Amplified Version. Now, we do not want, to, want you to be uninformed, believers, about those who are asleep in death, so that you will not grieve for them as others do, who have no hope beyond this present life. For if we believe that Jesus died and rose again, as in fact he did, even so God in this same way, by raising them from the dead, will bring with him those believers who have fallen asleep in Jesus. For we say this to you by the Lord's own words, that we who are alive and remain until the coming of the Lord will in no way proceed into his presence those believers who have fallen asleep in death. For the Lord himself will come down from heaven with a shout of command, with the voice of the archangel and with the blast of the trumpet of God, and the dead in Christ will rise first. Then we who are alive and remain on the earth will simultaneously be caught up or raptured together with them, the resurrected ones, in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. And so we will always be with the Lord. Therefore, comfort and encourage one another with these words concerning our reunion with believers who have died. This is the end of the reading. God bless you. Bless you. Blessed afternoon. I just want to share this song with you. It says, grace is greater than all our sin. Hallelujah. In holy pages, this truth can be found. A message to stand on when darkness arouses. Oh, but right never loses, and wrong will never win. Grace will always be greater than sin. Grace will always be greater than sin. Oh, Calvary has proven it. Time and choices you made. Sin has a price, but so often you've been. Oh, but Jesus is waiting. New hope is in him. Cause God
So whatever you got And wherever you've been My God's grace will always be greater than sin I want to talk from down here. Um, all the years I've been at this church, and this month, March 33 years I was here, I've never come down here to say anything in a funeral other than at the end. But you know, um, Fitz comes to me as a friend. I mean, you know, I only knew him for about a month, given either over a month or under a month, I'm not sure. How do I make meet him, but I met him because his sister asked me to describe his condition to me, stage 4 cancer, so and so, I would like to come and pray for him. I said, no problem. And that Sunday afternoon, not knowing where I was going, she took me, and I got to the, the house. And in entering the house, there was Fitz Lane, of course, he's bedridden, so to speak, and a lady is attending to him. I just thought it was a lady attending to him. That's all I thought. I was not told of a lady, so my focus on Fitz. So I got inside, and I sat down, and um, I'm there, he's there. And I said, you know, your sister invited me, I'm here to pray with you, etc. And if you should want me to come and pray with you at that time, I will do three things. I will share the word, I will sing however best good I can, and I will pray for you, among other things. Um, so as I told him I was going to do this, he said, okay, but could you do me a favor? Now, I always hesitate when people ask me about favors, because in the past, I have... People have asked me to do favors, and I've promised I've not been able to fulfill, and it's embarrassing me you can't fulfill something you promise. So I do not say yes quickly. I always say, if I can, a lot of room that I can get out of it if I have to. And um, he said to me, I want to marry that lady over there. Now, I thought the man was kidding. So I thought he's kicking with me. So I turned to her. She's over this side. I said, um, you want my he? In kicks and form. I was saying jovially because I thought that's what it came across. And she nodded meekly, yes. So I realized, this is serious. So I turned to him, I said, but, um, I, I, I said, but, um, but how long have you been together? In case you didn't know, I'm, I'm, I hope I'm not saying, saying that you didn't know directly, but 40 years. When you said 40 years, I said 40 years? Of course, that led to the well, why not and all that, but I won't get into that now. But I promise I would. And for the next two weeks or so, I was between home affairs and their home, home affairs and their home. She had to get, because she's been sanctioned born papers to make sure she's not illegal in the pure country after all these years and all that. All that had to be passed over. And so it was. And of course, since Fitz could not go to um, sign for his license, in case you didn't know, they had to go to them at another $100. I said, but the man said, you making a stitch out of $100, but that's the system. That's the system. And um, they did go. And they were surprised to know that we did not know each other except for those two weeks or so that all this took place. What am I saying? Well, the day came. And they got married. And within one week of getting married, Fitz died. That really broke me. But let me back up though, because I'm not here to cry really on that. Okay. But um, that first evening in meeting with Stephanie and Fitz, both of them bowed their heads and repeated after me what we term the sinner's prayer. Sincerely, I'm sure. And I am here to say this evening, Fitz, in his last weeks, invited Christ to be his savior 
or gave his life over to Jesus Christ. Now, some people question that, you know. I don't. I don't. I never question things like that. The man on the cross, the thief on the cross, as we call him, at the 59th, or would that be second, 59th minute, 23rd hour, asked Christ to be his savior. And was told, today you shall be with me in paradise. I believe in that type of salvation. Because God's will is that nobody should perish, but that all should come to repentance and faith in Jesus Christ. God allowed faith to come to that point. And you know why I'm saying this? In my years of passing, which is about 45, I've met people who said to me, you know, when I read again, come to the Lord, I know they mean it too. It doesn't happen, though I can say, in many cases. I've met people in the hospital bed who could see for yourself they're dying. And they're telling me, when I come out, I can come to church. They never get out. So they never get to church except in this condition. And I'm saying this to you because we put off things thinking that we can have time. One of the lessons I've learned as a pastor is that if God calls you today, he means today, not tomorrow. Because tomorrow will come, but you might not be there. And then you might be there, but not under the conviction of the Holy Spirit. I've realized that. So today, even our face, dead body, I appeal to you, like Fitz, to give your life to Jesus Christ. It is the greatest decision you could make. As the scripture just read says, the last word it says, comfort one another or encourage one another with these words. What words? The preceding verses. You don't have to mourn like those who have no hope, says Paul, of the other life. Because this is not the end, especially for those who are in Christ. And if I read a scripture that says, anybody that believes in me never dies. And that's an interesting scripture because you have to ask them, I mean never dies. Was he dead? But the Bible calls the death of a, a believer, not death, but sleep. And let me ask you, I'm sure all of you went to sleep last night, unless you had a, a, the graveyard shift and you couldn't sleep for some reason, couldn't get to sleep, couldn't get the chance to sleep. But even, even security people sleep, somehow. But when you went to sleep, the next thing you expected on going to sleep was to wake up. And that's what Paul is saying. The believer is at rest for now until Jesus descends from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel, with the trump of God, and the dead in Christ shall rise first to meet the Lord in the air. The living in Christ shall caught up with them to meet them as well. The question is, are we in Christ? Should we die now? I mean, nobody knows when they're going to die. Nobody knows. But we all know we're going to die. And common sense and wisdom tells me, since this is inevitable, since this is imminent, it's going to happen, the sensible thing is to prepare for it. You know, none of us know when there's going to be a hurricane. But since common sense tells us, always be prepared. Get your batteries, get your this, Make sure you got a place to store water. Make sure you have medicine in place. All of this is said, make sure your roof is intact. They got all the hur hurricane, whatever they're called. And, and make sure, make sure. And you're sure you're going to be a hurricane. You're just making sure. But you are sure you're going to die. The question is, are we ready to die? That's the question. And, and the truth is, death does not make one smile. Huh? Death, death brings a sense of morbidity to life. For instance, look at how we are dressed. I'm in a black suit. Blue. And, and that's how, somehow, you know, <laughs> if you sat in a psychiatrist's chair, and he was uh, put certain words that you, you were to say the first thing come to your mind. And he says, God, you might say, that, you know, uh, creator, whatever. He says, mother, and you smile, you say, money, of course, that's my wife. <laughs> you, you talk about love and all that. But when you say death, smile doesn't come across your face. You begin to think black, dark, some negative, somehow, a melancholy way of thinking. But Jesus, but the word of God is telling us, because of Jesus, the sting of death has been removed. And if you know the Lord, you don't have to fear to die, even though you're going to die. When? Nobody knows. How? Nobody knows, but you're going to. A lady was traveling in the back of a vehicle on Barbary's Hill several years ago. Innocently going for a Sunday afternoon drive. And somebody in the area, release a shot that traveled from that, not at her, but it traveled from that distance and landed in her head and she died days later. 
Who knows how we are going to go? But we are going to go. Are we prepared to go? That's the thing. When you're going overseas, you pack. Some of you are last minute, agree. Like myself, I, I never seem to pack early enough, but I'm always trying to put in a few things early. But, but we pack, we pack, you know, we prepare. And death is the most, um, uh, the one thing that we should, above everything else, we should be prepared. Now, the question would be, how do you prepare? There's only one way, my friends, and that is through Jesus Christ, not the church. Oh, Lord. They say there are going to be three types of people that are going to make it to heaven. Or, or, or are you going to know the three types of people in heaven then? First of all, you say, wait, you mean I made it? Oh, boy, thank God I made it, boy. Wait, she made it? That woman that was so and so, but she made it. I didn't mean you, of course. But how come here? But this one is sorry. I realized I said it wrong at the beginning. But how come this one in there? I mean you, Neil. How come that pastor didn't make it? How come that fellow that was so churchy and make it? And that's the surprise of heaven. Who make it? That I made it. And who didn't make it? I want to encourage you to make it. And the only way to make it is not in church. It's in Christ. One may be baptized and not saved. One may be in the choir and not saved. One may be cursing themselves the Lord's supper but not saved. One may be in the church for all their lives and singing all the songs and know all the hymns and all that, but not saved. We have to be in Christ. He is the only answer. As the little ones will say from down below, Christ is the answer. The answer for the world today. He's the answer for you and for me. Several years ago, I gave my life to Christ as a teenager. I'm now 68 years of age. So over 50 years at least. I've been serving. Not perfectly. No, 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 no. I have, I have wandering footsteps. Too. I have those dumb moments back there then. But thank God, I'm here today by the grace of God. And I invite you, all of you, any of you, any one of you, know Jesus Christ. He is truly the answer. I close on those remarks. Just say amen with me. Amen. He lives. I serve a This is the Easter song. We wrote a song. It was the last song I remember singing for Easter Sunday morning. Let's stand and sing. He lives. You ask me how I know he lives? He lives within my heart. He lives within me. He's changed me. He's made me the man I am. Thank God for God to meet him and, and change him. At the last, I invite any of you this evening in this room of service, give your life to Christ. You will not regret. It's a decision you will never live to regret. I serve a risen Savior. Sing it with gusto and joy. After prayer, we will have our poor bears. I serve a risen Savior. He's in the world today. I know that He is. I know that He is there. I seek his hand of mercy, I hear his voice of cheer, and just a time I need him, he's always near. Yes, he lives, he lives. oh, he lives, he lives. yes, he lives, Christ Jesus lives today, he walks with me. Along my sorrow way, he left, he left, salvation to impart. You ask me how I know he lives, he lives with me. And though my heart grows weary, I never shall despair. I know that He is leading through every stormy blast. The day of His appearing will come at last. He left. Yes, it is, Christ, 
what Jesus loves to do. He walks with me and he talks with me along the narrow way. He loves, he loves salvation to impart. You ask me how I know. Rejoice, rejoice, O Christians, lift up your voice and sing. Eternal hallelujahs to Jesus Christ, the King, the hope of all who seek Him, the help of all who find none other. So loving, so good and kind. Hallelujah. He loves, he loves Christ Jesus loves today. He walks with me and talks with me along my narrow way. from the services extremely serious and um, I never know when we might meet again on this side. I'm aware of the fact that many people do not go to church except when there's a funeral. I'm not saying to judge nobody. That's not my point. But to challenge you, it behoves me as a minister of the gospel to challenge every man and every woman to know Jesus Christ. And if as you have come here today, you've heard about Fitz making this decision, you may not get the same chance as him in that way. But today is your day. Today is your salvation. And so the Bible says, if you hear his voice, don't harden your heart. And if God speaks to anybody here today, right in this service, you can know, okay, you're going to come to the altar. That's one of the things we brought in the church. That's that necessary. It's your heart. It's your confession of your mouth. It's your believing in your heart. That matters. Jesus met a woman at her well. And though she have five men that were not her husband, and number six was still not hers, he said to her, if you knew who you were talking to, you would ask me for living water. I give it you. She did ask. She did get. She did run home. She did say. Met a man in the tree called Zacchaeus, crooked as it would be said. And said, Zacchaeus, today salvation comes to your house. Come down. Let's go. Salvation comes to your house. Meets a man at night and said, Nick, boy, unless you're born again, you can't enter the kingdom of heaven. It's brought, or rather a woman's brought before him, caught in adultery. The Bible says in the very act. And he says to her, woman, not even me condemns you. Start fresh. Go, sin, no more. So whatever your experience that may not be good in the eyes of man or God, God still loves you. And still, God still calls you to repentance and faith today. If Jesus is speaking to you, will you make it your business to know him today as your Lord and Savior? Let's go and close in prayer, please. Let me ask for any show of hands. Anybody will let me say, Pastor, pray for me. I know I'm not saved, but just pray for me. Anybody like that? Yes, I see your hand. You don't have to be afraid. You don't have to be ashamed. Yes. It's about your soul. Christ died for you. Yes, you can turn your hands. Father, I do bring this congregation before you. Because each man and each woman, as well as youngster, matters to you. Jesus died for each one of us. That all could be saved. That all could come to repentance and faith in Jesus. And I pray for those who raise their hands, Lord. Where they are, can be their altar. Where they are, they can meet you. Where they are, they can say, God, be merciful to me, a sinner. For none that come to you are no wise, despise, or cast aside. And so, God, I pray for those who raise their hands, you will touch them in their hearts, and that right there they will believe in Jesus, 
who is the, the Savior, who is the way of salvation, who is the way, the truth, and the life. And perchance somebody did not raise a hand, but in their hearts, there's a tug. In their hearts, in their conscience, in their spirits, in their souls, the voice of God awakens and quickens and speaks, Lord. I pray right there, God, they would ask you for your mercy. So, Father, take full control of all the, the, in, in the what has gone before and all that is yet to come. May you get all glory, honor, and praise. We bless you. We give praise. In Jesus' name, and the people join me to say, Amen. Paul Bears, would you come, please? There's that beautiful song by Gramps. Um, I don't remember his name. But people like you, it's a song. <laughs> beautiful song. It's going to be our recession of the song. are made of gold. And when you get there, there's a hand to hold. I believe when your days down here are through, there's a place up there for people like you. Grant Morgan, I think is his name. You have a difficulty with this song?
every song we could ever sing. Worthy of all the praise we could ever bring. Worthy of every breath we could ever breathe. We'll live for you. Oh, we'll live for you. Jesus, the name above every other name. Jesus, the only one who could ever say. Worthy of every breath we could ever breathe. We'll live for you.
Just what is it in me? Sometimes I just don't know What keeps me in your love? Why you never let me go? And though you're in me now I fall and hurt you still My Lord, please show me how To know just how you feel You have forgiven me so many times it seems I feel I'm not what you might call A worthy Christian after all And though I love you so Temptation finds its way to me Teach me to trust you with all of my heart To lead me Oh 
Teach me to trust you with all of my heart. To lead not on my own understanding. No, no, no. I just forget. You won't give me what I can't bear. Take me out of the dark, my lord. I don't want to be there. Ooh, ooh,
renewed, flowing from the grace that I found in you. Lord, I've come to know the weaknesses I see in me. I can't. 
Ladies and gentlemen, we want your undivided attention as we now come to this time of to take all this world of soul of our deceased brother, even the late Fitz Everton Randolph Blackman. We therefore commit his body to the ground, earth to earth, ashes to ashes, dust to dust. Looking for the general resurrection in the last day and the life of the world to come through our Lord Jesus Christ, our whole second coming in glorious majesty to judge the world. The earth and the sea shall give up their dead. And the crowd of the bodies of those who sleep in him shall be changed and made like unto his glorious body, according to the mighty working, whereby he is able to subdue all things unto himself. Amen. Could we all say the Lord's Prayer together? Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. I heard a voice from heaven saying unto me, right from henceforth, Blessed are the dead who die in the Lord, even so self the Spirit, for they shall rest from their labors. And I trust that faith black man will indeed rest in peace. Amen.
Mein Vers. Vers 3, greater thy faithfulness, blessed assurance, and um, and the rest called you under those are the three songs for the committal. And after we have laid our reefs and uh, um, and so forth, we have the last song after the benediction. If perchance there's a gap between there, uh, streamers can also play with music. And of course, the same Grant Morgan song will be the final thing, closing off everything. And since streamers will have music, you can, uh, as a compliment, you can just sing along as well as listen. Praise the faithfulness. So you can sing along listen.
bless God. For the benediction, family and friends. Now may the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord mercifully and graciously cause his face to shine upon you. May the Lord lift up the light of his countenance upon you to grant each one of you his grace, peace, mercies, and blessings through Jesus Christ our Lord. And let all the people join me to say, Amen. I do wish a good afternoon to everyone. A better tomorrow to you, Stephanie, and to all family members. God be with you. And of course, remember, we're all here for you in your time of tears. God be with you. God bless. Final song is dedicated to you, family. God will take care of you. Old time song. We can find a better one, I don't think. That's again the greatest thrillers. Be not dismayed, whatever be tied, God will take care of you. His wings of love abide, God will take care of you. God will take care of you through every day or all the way. He will take care. Take care of you. God will take care of you through every day or all the way. He will take care of you. God will take care. If you give a little more than you take 
And if you try to fix more than you break If you're the kind who takes the time to help a stranger in the rain There's a place for people like you If you stand up for those down on their knees And lend a voice to those who cannot speak If you shine a little light, give sight to the ones who've lost their way There's a place for people like you I've heard up there the streets are made of gold And when you get there, there's a hand to hold When your day's down here or through There's a place up there for people like you If you walk around with your heart on your sleeve And if you're trying to be the change you want to see If you lay down your life for love so someone could be saved a place for people like you I've heard up there the streets are made of gold And when you get there there's a hand to hold I believe when your day's down here or through there's a place up there for people like you Mm-hmm.